Before Everton lost 2-1 to Man United, they hadn't lost for six games in a row, that's really good, and they'd only conceded seven goals in the Premier League, so you're thinking this team, they're defending really well, but actually they're not, because the expected goals against underlying statistics suggest that they're actually being quite lucky, they're overperforming of anything, and they're conceding many, many big chances, high value chances, but they're not being punished for it. Man United, this team here, they punished them for loads of mistakes they made in the game. You see lots of errors in both teams. But we saw what I think we did see was a little bit more of what Ten Hag's trying to do with his team in here, and particularly how important Casemiro is going to be for Man United going forward. I think he'll be in the team forevermore now going forward. That's what's going to happen. So let's look at what both managers are trying to do. Everton, nothing special. Trying to play in the, the break when they can. Trying to press aggressively with Moppy and Gordon and Gray. I will be joining in as well at times. You have Onana getting box to box. Sometimes Coleman would overlap. Sometimes Michalink would overlap. Lots of crosses. They like crosses into the box, which is fine when you have a striker like Calvert-Lewin. But it's not amazing when you've got someone like Moppy, who's all right, he's fine. But it, really, what you're really getting is lots of uh, chances being created on this far side. And then you just load players at the back post. So it's late on in the game, hardly anyone around, so the ball will have to be hooked to the back post, and then you get big defenders head it away, no real chance creation, they're not really there for the second ball either. They're just absolutely fine, they're absolutely fine, but there's nothing... I wouldn't be too worried as an Everton fan, I wouldn't be too excited either, nothing's going on really well that way. But Man United here, well, what we saw differently from United, Luke Shaw is back in, he had a good game, you saw Casemiro who anchored the midfield, and what you see with him is he started on the right side, Eriksen was left, when they build up play from the back, the things we've noticed is that they like to build goal kicks like this, with the two centre-backs in this area here, and they're getting a bit better at playing one and two touch football passes out from the back. But they still make loads of mistakes, particularly Dallo, Casemiro made a big one as well. But another thing they do in build up is you have Martinez, Lindelof, if the ball is the right side, then what you have is Dallo will drop into form a three with Casemiro, so you get a little diamond. So they like doing this a lot, or a triangle, it's more like this actually. That's what they do. If the ball's on the left side, Shaw comes back and you get Dallow pushes up. So like if it's Dallow here, then Shaw can go up and join in the fun. And Shaw can either overlap or you can underlap Rashford depending on where they go. So you've got your half spaces. Do you have one player in this vertical line here? Shaw might be here, so they can swap. But you don't have them in the same line. So you want a bit of depth and you want a bit of width. But you want to make sure they're not on the same bit. So it's all dependent on where the ball is and what they're doing in the phase of play. So if Dallow's this side, Shaw can go up here. If Shaw comes back and they build with a three like this, Dallow can go up here. But actually Dallow tends to play more inside the pitch because Anthony stays wide. And when you keep your wide players wide like this, what you do is end up creating space between the opposition fullback and the centre back because they want to watch that this guy's not going to come in. Even if he's trying to keep a tight back four like this, just having Anthony staying wide like this means that he's more inclined to want to push out. And when you push out like that, it means you've got Martial or Fernandez behind. So Fernandez can make a run into that space behind, or Martial can go in behind as well. So you've got like balls coming in from behind like uh, this. Fernandez can play around the corner for Martial, things like that. It's the sort of things you can do with a little bit like that. It's not hugely technical. It doesn't really matter, to be honest, but that's kind of what they're doing. United are trying to press, and they were better at pressing, I think, when they had Martial on the on the team, on the pitch. So they had Anthony, Fernandez, Martial, and Rashford trying to press as a four. Then you've got Eriksen slightly deeper. Uh, Dallo might join in with Casemiro in the midfield, so you get this sort of three here sometimes. Then Lindelof and Martinez are here. Shaw is helping with the overlap. So they, they build up with a three at the back like this, but as they get forward into the opposition half, then they're allowed to move, then they can open the pitch up. That's when you start getting Shaw having more of the fun when he likes to go forward. And um, just join in really, just have a bit of fun. But the game was settled by mistakes. There's nothing tactical, nothing really clever particularly. Everton knew that Anthony, what he's going to do when he gets the ball here is he's going to come inside, so you can just stop him by going and blocking that across there. He's a good player and he still scored a goal, but it's to do with turnovers and possession by the opposite team in bad parts of the pitch. So when you're exposed and build up, when you're trying to make the pitch nice and wide, that's when problems happen. So the first goal, for example, Gordon's trying to stay wide here because the same thing, it drags a bit of space between the centre back and left back by staying wide rather than getting closer to the ball. He's trying to stay wide, create space so that eventually you can attack the space rather than just be standing in it and be marked. So he's over here like this and you've got these guys over here. Now, um, eventually what happens is Onana creeps up. He had a good game, this guy. Um, you've got a gaze uh, anchoring the midfield with a Obi. Obi's more of an attacking player. But Onana's waiting around here and they say they play out from the back. Anthony passes into Casemiro. Casemiro passes back to Anthony, I think. He goes back to Casemiro. But he's, as he does that, they're being closed in. They're being closed in by this Everton uh, squeezing press. Onana steps in, wrong side of Casemiro, wins the ball. 
and then they break and they go forwards and what ends up happening is just a really great shot from Obi. he bends one in from 25 yards it's a really really good hit caused by a mistake by Casemiro who makes up for it in the end because he sets up the winning goal so it's all fine Casemiro fans don't worry other than that what happened was there was far too much for the Man United's manager's perspective, far too much end-to-end -end football. There's no control of it. Everton is trying to throw the ball forward. They're trying to attack spaces in behind the fullbacks. They're trying to get the ball forward really quick. Pickford can absolutely ping a ball. You got Tarkovsky hitting balls wide. So you got players like Gordon can attack, Gray can attack. Because if you can get players like Gray and Gordon, uh, if you're playing a 4-5-1, it becomes a 4 3 3 attack. But all you need is basically is one of these guys to have a bit of a good time once, and they can get a ball in for Moppy to score and then you can just lock that down and hope that you're, you get lucky with your defending like they have been so far in the season. So they're completely lucky, it's just that the numbers basically suggest Everton are worse than they actually are at the moment. But that's sort of what we're seeing from them. Uh, Shaw overlapping, Dallow playing inside, Anthony going wide, uh, Casemiro caught out with that goal there, and then the equalising goal that Man United score, um, it's another mistake. It's Dallow who's playing in the middle as the pivot player, he's moved over from right back to here. So again, you're creating these uh, passing lanes, always got these options. So the ball in theory can come in here, you take one touch and you can fire it wide. That's what you want to do. So if he's moved in here, and he's not sure who to mark, he's kind of in no man's land, which means that that ball, if it's played in the first time, you can ping it wide. Instead, Dallo turns, tries to thread a ball through, I think to Fernandez over here, with the outside of his foot, doesn't do it very well, easily intercepted by Gay, and then suddenly Everton have a huge chance, and this is where really good players would be able to turn this into an attack and score. But instead what happens is Gay passes to Iwobi, who passes back to Gay, and then he just loses the ball. He just doesn't touch it properly and control it. Fernandez steals the ball into Martial, and then you see the benefit of having Anthony wide with Mikalenko here, because it creates this space in the middle for Martial to thread the ball through, for Anthony to come in the, the blind side of him and finish on his very left foot. He has the very left foot. That was the equaliser. The winning goal is Ronaldo comes on because Martial's gone off. Again, it's quite end-to-end, -end, but United in the second half especially had started to try and, uh, rather than uh, when you win the ball and start attacking immediately, they're trying to play more extra passes to try and make sure that rather than breaking with a, a front three that are loose like this, they slow it down, try and control the game so they can get everyone into the right shape so they have control of the pitch and that forces Everton back. So then you can control it and it becomes more of a Ten Hag team where you can pass the ball around and make sure you're using all your options rather than just trying to rely on uh, counter-attacking mistakes that would be made. And then what happens eventually is that um, Everton are attacking at some point. Iwobi has the ball, he runs into Casemiro, they swapped over here, so Iwobi wins the ball, he goes in a run across the pitch, tries to uh, step over his way past Casemiro in this part of the pitch, which is a bad idea. Casemiro reads it easily and wins the ball. And then as soon as Casemiro wins the ball, what you've got, Ronaldo hangs in the space, behind the fullback. So when fullbacks push forward, this is when you leave the space behind it. Ronaldo positions himself here, rather than being here trying to pin the centre backs back, he just moves with the spaces. So as soon as that ball's turned over, he's free. He just knows he'll be free. And he comes across here, runs in to score. Had Connor Cody been, I don't know, four years younger, or just fast, he'd have been able to catch up, stop him, maybe show him why he'd block the shot, something like that trying to stop him. But it's a great finish from Ronaldo, 700th goal for him. They're coming together a little bit more. You can see there's steps taken coming forward, but better teams are going to cause problems to this Man United team, especially if they're giving the ball away in these um, build-up phases of play. They're looking a bit better. Casemiro makes them safer defensively, holding it all together. But when you're playing uh, a press of so Fernandez, Ronaldo, Anthony and Rashford and you've got this depth between them, Casemiro can't cover all of this on his own and that's the problem you've got. You've got to be a lot more compact, push them all together, squeeze and try and get this uh, team to be able to stop playing past this press. If you're going to a half-hearted, you're not going to win games. And so that's sort of what happened in the game. It was alright. Uh, did you enjoy the game? What do you think of the game? Did you like the game? Do you like Casemiro? Tell me what you think of Casemiro in the uh, comments. Let's drive the engagement, let's do it. Yes, goodbye. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. There are journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.